15th of October, the cream of the country's brass bands gathered at the Royal Albert Hall in London to compete for the Besson National Brass Band Championships of Great Britain. And this year, all the bands were playing a new work specially commissioned by BBC Radio 3. Well, here with his report on the day, including a complete performance from the winning band, is Petrock Trelawney. Since first thing this morning, coaches from Glasgow, Hull, Beaumaris in North Wales, Camborne in Cornwall, Brighouse in Yorkshire and a host of other towns and cities across Great Britain have been stopping outside the Royal Albert Hall and depositing their passengers. Musicians who have come to London to take part in the most prestigious event of the brass band year, the National Championships. After a series of regional playoffs, 20 bands have made it through to today's final. Competition is tight. Some of the country's finest, including Grimethorpe and Foden's, didn't make it through. But for those that are here, there is everything to play for, as they fight to become national champions. The test piece this year that all the bands play is by Michael Ball. It's a work that's been commissioned by BBC Radio 3, and its title is taken from an Irish poem, All the Flowers of the Mountain. It's a kind of gathering of the clans, this contest. In and outside the hall, you hear cries of recognition as people greet each other. And as well as hearing the bands, there are trade stalls to be visited, news to be spread, gossip to be caught up on. The audience isn't just British either. Band lovers come here from around the world. We're from Norway, yeah. And how strong is, is the brass band movement in Norway? It's quite strong. It's the uh, second largest activity after football in uh, Norway. So most of the kids have playing in school bands or, yeah. What do you think about the standard you've heard? Of the bands, it's good. It's really good. Better than Norway? Yeah. Where have you both come from today? We've come up from Wiltshire. Now this is your very first time? Absolutely the first time in my life. It's fantastic, isn't it? I wish I could read music and know music, but the, the sound is absolutely incredible. What's so good about the whole concept? Is it the competition? Is it the hall? Is it the bands? Or is it a... I think it's the whole lot, isn't it? I mean, what a lovely setting for something like this. And the sound is absolutely phenomenal. Now, where are you two from? From Holland. And what, what do you think of what you're hearing here today? Well, we listen to this a lot at home, CDs, so uh, it's good. Um, and what about young people? Is there to be a There's lot more of... brass bands here. More, more? Yes. And there's going to be a lot of young people in bands here. Is that the same in, in Holland? Yes. Is it something that young people... A lot of young people, in? yes. Are you enjoying it, Tim? Yes, wonderful, yeah. Again, what is it about it that, that makes it for you? Well, I'm a brass bander, really. I've given up now, but I've followed all three of my nephews from, oh, for the last 20 years, I suppose. They all started off with Bob Mintown. One progressed from there to one of the Welsh bands that play here today, Glenamon. And, uh, as I say, my nephew is playing with Black Dyke today, so... And the fact that it is a national championship that, that gives a chance to hear bands, two bands from Cornwall, two bands from Scotland, bands from Wales, it is an event that, that, that celebrates music right across the UK. Oh, isn't? yeah. It's unique, isn't it? There's nowhere else in the world you can really get as many bands of this quality, really. I mean, it goes right the way down because the standard is, is, is absolutely wonderful. I think we're incredibly lucky. Thank you. 
As I said, there is a real family feel to this championship. Old friends running into each other, and I've just run into an old friend of mine, Jeremy Squibb, who plays soprano cornet in Camborne Town Band. You and I were at school together at Helston a decade or so ago. What did you make of today's piece? Once we actually got into it, and I'm fortunate enough to have Frank Renton come down and conduct us for this piece, uh, he sort of weaved our way through the through the flowers of the mountainside it could be and uh, and actually found some sense in it for us and it, it's, it's great yeah we, we really enjoyed it in the end it's got some moments where you're pretty exposed doesn't it everyone's been telling me all week that i've got quite a part in it and uh <laughs> I, I just thought well this is all right this is nice enough but uh listening to a few bands this morning i thought well perhaps i have got a bit of a part in it yeah <laughs> so uh, but right the way throughout the band the, the cornet the soprano the flugel the phonium the bass trombone all very very exposed overall so uh, playing in a large hall like this is when it tells if you can make the grade or not. What's the journey to get here for a, a band from a, a relatively small town in Cornwall to get to this final? During the summer we're out on a very very frequent basis trying to raise money mm. to get up here. It, it costs us probably in the region of about £7,000 to come to London by the time we have our coach supporters, the coach, hotels the hotels, the rehearsal rooms, of course Frank to come down as well. So, so it all adds up and, and the one thing that we don't have is sponsorship. Um, the other luxury we don't have is when we get the music, we have to make our players fit the music rather than have the luxury that I know perhaps some of the Yorkshire bands and the, and the bigger bands do. If, if they need a particular part played, they can get a player in or fly someone over from New Zealand or, or whatever. You know, they've, they've got that luxury where they can get professionals in. We've, we've got to make do with our, with our good old local boys and girls, which makes it friendly and a little competitive at times. And I think I remember you dancing and playing in Helston Town Band occasionally on Florida. On Florida, I did, yes. I danced, we get back to that? I danced twice when we were at school, um, played numerous times, and I was fortunate enough last year to dance in the midday dance with the top hat and tail, so uh, that's, that's always a, a nice one. But um, yes, thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs> I like to think of Jeremy Squibb and myself as still being young, but I suppose we must face the fact that we are now into our 30s. Look around here today, though, and there are loads of teenagers and people in their early 20s, some of them probably siblings of players, but many here simply because they like brass band music. Trevor Caffel is managing director of Salvationist Publishing and Supplies and a key figure in the business side of the brass band world. I think you've hit on there one of the key factors about the banding movement at the moment, which provides me with more encouragement than, than any other factor. You talk about the number of younger people at this event. If you go to the regional events that act as the qualifying contests, you see bands and followers of bands chock full of, of young people. The challenge for us, of course, like in so many other areas of society, is to, to hang on to those young people through that late teens, early 20s, phase and to keep them interested in the movement and of course one of the ways of doing that is to make events like this even stronger more attractive uh, to be part of Flowers of the Mountain, the 2004 test piece in this Besson National Brass Band Championships, written by Michael Ball, who's with me now. Michael, there's a, a wonderful sense of Celtic mist, of Irish myth and legend infusing this work, and I know it's, it's inspired in part by your hometown now, Dunleary, just outside Dublin. That's right. It's, in fact, the first in a series of pieces which was really in response to the idea of writing a kind of brass band uh, equivalent of Charles Ives's Three Places in New England. 
I did start planning the entire work, but as it went on, I found I had to put material to one side because the threads for the first started to open up in such an expansive way that I found that was quite enough to fill the allotted time span of a, a, of a contest piece. It, it's a tricky test, I imagine, writing a contest piece, because first of all, you're told strictly it has to be 13 minutes. You can maybe go a minute over that, but not much more. Also, you have to write something that, that really gives a band a chance to show off, involves as many solo players as possible, for example. Yeah, I think it's quite difficult to come into it cold. I mean, I've had the very valuable experience of, of writing pieces at all contesting levels, from, from youth bands through the fourth section, and this will be my third uh, major championship piece. But at the same time, I, I'm always concerned that what comes out in the end is hopefully going to be a decent piece of music and it has its own integrity and isn't just a series of you know, hoops to be put through like circus performers. Not just have you composed the test piece for this year, you've been one of the adjudicators too. You may have suffered a degree of tent fever today because you've spent <laughs> eight hours sitting with your two fellow adjudicators in the tent that's constructed in the middle of the stalls area here at the Royal Albert Hall. You were allowed one very brief comfort stop, as it was euphemistically described, yes. in the middle of the day. But other than that, you were stuck there. Total anonymity, of course, in brass band championships. The judge is not allowed to know which band is playing. The order randomly chosen first thing this morning. What did you think of the quality of the bands you heard? I think overall it was very, very hard high indeed. Uh, there was at one stage when I thought that perhaps I hadn't made the piece hard enough. But in fact it did uh, sort out the bands and in the nicest way possible. I mean we were completely unanimous on our decisions but also I was very glad that all the 20 performances uh, were at the top were incandescent and in the lower uh, numeration of those who were playing. Nobody was embarrassed by what was put in front of them. All bands gave creditable performances and I hope enjoyed working on the test piece and will go home feeling that they've put across a good job here today at the Royal Albert Hall. There can only be one winner of course, will you tell us who's won? And well, uh, yes indeed, it's Black Dyke. They gave a, a quite superlative performance which we were looking at one another you know, within seconds of their starting because it had that essential direction from the very beginning through to the very end, and yet that essential flexibility and spaciousness which is built into my uh, conception for the piece. The ending is in, in fact slightly unusual in that it's, it's normally expected for uh, championship pieces to end in a blaze of glory with some kind of, of treble forte C major chord. I've written a few of those and I didn't feel any compelling urgency to write yet another one. And also the, the musical logic of the piece it came out in such a way that at quite early on I was quite sure that the opening and closing moments of the piece would have a great deal in, in common and I, I do hope that that has uh, come across with sufficient musical logic to those who have been listening to the piece. Well let's hear their performance now. The winner of the 2004 National Brass Band Championships Black Dyke conducted by Nicholas Childs performing All the Flowers of the Mountain by Michael Ball. <laughs>
Black Dyke representing Yorkshire and Michael Ball's All the Flowers of the Mountain. Nicholas Childs conducting Black Dyke here at the Royal Albert Hall. Congratulations on your victory today. Thank you very much indeed. We're absolutely elated. Uh, it's uh, and a really important contest, of course. Uh, we enjoyed the music and when you're approaching the 150th year of the band's history, what a way to go into it. What is it that makes Black Dyke so strong at the moment? It really is on top of the world. It is uh, doing fantastically well. I always say to people, we're lucky. Contests for me are the sport of our movement. 
but the lifeblood is the concerts, and Black Dyke's uh, engagement list is just terrific. Nicholas Charles, thank you very much indeed. Congratulations once again to Black Dyke, winner of the 2004 National Brass Band Championships. <laughs>